Hello everyone, good Sunday morning out there to you guys. Welcome back to another Weather on the Go weather forecast where you guys get all your weather coverage. If you guys like these breakdowns of my weather forecast, my long range weather forecast, my tropical weather updates and everything like that, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates here on this channel. Good Sunday morning out there to you guys. Again, we're gonna be tracking the La Nina as well here in this video. We're gonna be tracking October weather forecast for you guys and also towards the end of this video we'll be tracking your short-term weather forecast here with a couple of troughs bringing some extremely cool temperatures to the eastern part of the country as we head through the, at least the first couple of weeks here in october so looking first here across the uh, united states and in, in portions here of north america we actually are seeing a pretty quiet weather pattern here overall we got a little bit of an upper level low pressure system spinning across the north central rockies bringing some precipitation to these areas we got the remnants of uh, Hurricane Ian actually across the East Coast, moving farther to and farther to the Northeast here, kind of becoming more of a nuisance every day that goes by here and actually kind of exiting the picture here of the United States through the next couple of days. But first I wanted to touch on the La Nina because this is actually driving our weather forecast, even our hurricane season as well. And we still are in a moderate La Nina. You can still see we got a lot of cooler temperatures across the equatorial Pacific here from the South uh, South America coast all the way westward along the equator there towards the Central Pacific Ocean. And really over the last seven days, we have still seen a couple of spots here of some cooler bursts of water here across these areas. So still we do have some cooling, but overall the La Nina has started to weaken ever so slightly, but we still are firmly in that moderate La Nina status. So how does this work? Let's kind of show you a diagram of this here real quick. We have enhanced upwelling of cold water here. The reason why we're seeing that is actually because these trade winds here from east to west across the uh, equatorial Pacific and the central Pacific here from the coast of South America westward along the equator is actually quite strong. And that is actually causing a lot of upwelling here from the bottom of the ocean to the top. And when you have those cooler waters in the bottom of the ocean here starting to move toward the top, the sea surface temperatures actually cool off rather significantly. And that's what we, you know, consider a La Nina this time of year. So that's kind of what we're looking at. And looking at the chart here, this the Nino index, you still see we're firmly in a moderate La Nina here. It has strengthened a little bit over the last couple of days, but kind of remaining steady to weakening stage here the last couple of weeks. But we are seeing it starting to you know weaken here a little bit over the last day or so, and we'll see if that trend does continue. Looking, however, at the next several months here ahead, we do look like at least a 90% chance, 90 to 90 1% chance of a La Nina continuing all the way through November. And then here starting to weaken ever so slightly into the middle of December here back to around a 75% chance here of La Nina continuing pretty good chance there all the way back to maybe neutral conditions. It may take all the way till the turn of the year back to 2023 in late winter here, late January into February for we get back to neutral conditions and then probably stay around neutral conditions here all the way through at least the spring time frame. And then there are hints that an El Nino may start to take over potentially and as we get towards next summer. But right now, the chances of that happening are only at about a 30% chance, even as we get towards next May, June, and July. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. But yes, La Nina and then eventually neutral conditions will be very dominant over the next several months ahead across our weather. So look, let's kind of break this down here week by week here on your October weather forecast. We'll start October 1st here, all the way through October 8th. And you can see the ridge of high pressure is gonna be very dominant across the Pacific. Pacific Northwest, the Western United States, and really all the way up to portions of Alaska. We're going to have warmer than normal temperatures there. We do have some troughing across the Northeastern Pacific, driving some storm systems across those areas. A little bit of troughing across the Eastern United States in association to the remnants of Hurricane Ian. Looking at the precipitation from this, again, you can see higher precipitation with the remnants of Hurricane Ian across the Mid-Atlantic, going up toward the Boston area, Cape Cod, Long Island here the next couple of days. We also have some monsoonal moisture across portions of western Mexico starting to pull its way northward across the Rockies. That's where we're seeing that upper level low pressure system with some rainfall there this week. But in between there, across the middle Mississippi Valley, down into the Gulf Coast, we're pretty dry across these areas all the way through the 8th of October, as well as the Pacific Northwest and much of Canada as well, pretty dry here this week. But as we go here from October 8th through the middle of the month, through October 15th, we have that ridge starting to swing a little bit 
farther to the east here, now encompassing much of south central Canadian provinces, all the way back down into the Plains states. And we will have a couple of troughs digging down across the eastern Pacific Ocean. Now, this is important to note that just because you see the purple colors here in Canada does not mean that we're going to see above normal temperatures this entire period. There will very, you know, there very well will be, uh, you know, troughs digging down across the Great Lakes here and actually bringing much below normal temperatures for a couple of these days as we head into the second week here in October. And looking at that again with that ridge in place here and a couple of these troughs moving through, there could be some limited chances for precipitation, I suppose, across the upper Midwest and the East Coast, but largely kind of uh, averaging out here between October 8th through the 15th time frame, below normal precipitation, at least slightly below normal precipitation during this period. We might see a little bit more rainfall across portions of West Texas, getting in towards the four corner states there and maybe in towards Kansas, and then a little bit more of an active pattern across the West Coast as we start to see more troughing build in across these areas as we get toward the middle of the month. As we get towards here, the third week in October, we're talking October 15th through the 22nd. We'll still see some ridging across the United States, but I want to turn your attention to a strong trough that looks to become, uh, you know, a couple of these strong troughs will start to uh, pivot its way across portions of Alaska, the Aleutian Islands, toward the Pacific Northwest, and a couple of these could kind of pivot its way across the United States from west to east during this period. That could enhance the severe weather potential toward the second half of October. That will be something to note as we have some warmer temperatures out ahead of that a stronger trough digging in here a couple of those could be producing some severe weather some more heavy rain toward the end of the month that will be something to note and we also have to watch the east coast there's some blue anomalies showing up here that could be in an you know a more active hurricane season with still some tropical weather across the eastern united states we have to watch toward the second half here of october especially from the middle of october toward the end of october that will be something to watch and looking at the precipitation largely drier than normal across the united states but don't let this map fool you. There will be precipitation for many across the Central Plains into the Mississippi Valley there and the Mid-Atlantic because some of these troughs will swing on through and produce here a couple of quick shots of some severe weather and probably hear some heavy rainfall at times as well. The most active period will be across the Caribbean here down towards southern Florida as well in the Gulf and then back up across western Canada as we get into the third week of October. And finally to round out your October weather forecast, let's go into the very last week in October here. October 22nd through the 29th. You can see a lot more of these troughs starting to develop just south of the Aleutian Islands. And these, again, will pivot across the area here. And you can see ridging will build out ahead of those. And we'll have another trough digging in here, uh, you know, pivoting its way from west to east across the United States. And again, another setup for severe weather, I think, across the central plains, maybe getting up in toward the northern plains of this go around as we head toward the very last week in October. We might have a little bit more of some cooler weather here with some drop downs of some of these troughs from southeastern Canada all the way down potentially to the northern uh, Florida panhandle and also some tropical weather influence there as well. Looking here at the precipitation during that period from October 22nd through the 29th, a lot more action here across the Pacific Northwest. Could be a wet go of it from Seattle down to Portland. A lot of drier conditions, but again, don't let this map fool you. There will be quick shots of some severe weather and heavy rainfall again across portions of the plains and toward the Ohio Valley as well across this map and we actually have to watch for some precipitation, maybe some early snowfall up across portions of New England as we round out the month here of October. So that's your October weather forecast, but this is the NOAA uh, Climate Prediction Center's monthly temperature outlook here for October, largely above normal temperatures from portions of the central and western United States. There will be slightly below normal temperatures across the northeast here into the mid-Atlantic and looking at precipitation, largely drier than normal across the middle of the country, but we already touched on that, that even though it says below normal here, we still will have some precipitation chances from the upper uh, upper Midwest all the way down to Texas and the Gulf Coast. A lot more of that enhancement of the precipitation across the East Coast there with more tropical activity, I think, in October and maybe some monsoonal moisture here being fetched up from western Mexico in toward the Rocky Mountain states as we head into October as well.
Let's look at the remainder here of the, you know, first half or so of the hurricane season here into October. Um, looking at the hurricane season going all the way through October 8th, there will be some active times across the southern Atlantic, but I do rem I do think that it'll be largely quiet for the next few days here across the Gulf and the Caribbean here. There could be some action here across the Western Caribbean. We may have to watch for the Central Americas, but largely pretty quiet behind Hurricane Ian here and its remnants going through October 8th. That changes in a big way, I think, as we get towards the middle and actually towards the end of October, as we start to really see more of these, you know, green blobs showing up across the Caribbean, the Gulf and the Western Atlantic. And that is indicative of what could be another action, you know, action packed, um, you know, end of the season here, getting toward the end of the season here. And yeah, it's going to be ramping up once again, potentially, as we get toward the middle and end of October with more of these systems tracking westward toward the Caribbean and maybe lifting back up toward Florida. So again, just because Florida had storms here just recently doesn't mean we don't have to, you know, keep a high alert for that going into October because we still could have hurricanes well into October. So that will be something to watch. And looking at the water temperatures as well, there was some cooling of the water temperatures across the west coast of Florida, the, uh, down toward the Key West area, and really along the immediate east coast of the United States. That was the upwelling here from Hurricane Ian. That will, I think, fill back in with some warmer anomalies here um, eventually. But the Caribbean is still a uh, fire hose right now. We are seeing a lot of warmer temperatures here across the Caribbean, sea surface temperatures. And looking really at the Atlantic as a whole, we still have a lot of warm waters across the southern Atlantic, much of the greater and lesser Antilles here. And eventually, like I said, the western Atlantic here as well and into portions of uh, the Caribbean and the Gulf will start to warm up with time as we head through the middle of October. October. And speaking of the hurricane season, we have a 70% chance of a system developing here across the southeastern Atlantic right now, well away from the United States and the Lesser Antilles, to say the very least. This is just coming off the coast here of Africa. And looking here today, again, very quiet. We got the Bermuda high pressure system in domination across the center of the uh, Atlantic Ocean here. And then at, that will continue to move, may, you know, move its way to the east as we get towards early next week. We may have a tropical depression forming here with a 1,009 millibar low pressure center by Tuesday. And then as we get towards Thursday, that will start to get eaten up by this high pressure system and all the wind shear out there. The wind shear will be pretty impressive here with, uh, just ahead of the storm. So as the storm kind of moves its way to the northwest, it'll run into what we call a buzzsaw, really, uh, with all that wind shear. So that will be something to watch towards next week. Shouldn't have any implications on the U.S. or anything like that. Looking, however, at the temperatures here in the short term, we got a trough underneath this ridge here just south of the Aleutian Islands in the eastern Pacific. We got that ridging here across southern Canada into the United States. Some warmer temperatures here, but as we get in toward late this week, there's going to be a pretty potent trough starting to dig down across the upper Great Lakes into southeastern Canada, and this will receive lots of attention with a lot of cooler temperatures, maybe another frost and freeze for portions of the upper Great Lakes and Midwest with a large area here with the Climate Prediction Center's forecast from October 7th all the way through Tuesday, October 11th, with likely, if not expected, to be below normal across much of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and especially New England during this period. So that will be something to keep an eye on. We could have near normal to slightly below normal uh, temperatures across the, uh, the Texas area, getting back to New Mexico. And then that ridge will dominate across the West Coast there from Seattle all the way down to Portland and even into California California, as we get here into portions of next week. So that will be something to watch. As we look here ahead to late this week, we're going to be seeing that strong cold front dive down with that trough. And look at these high temperatures on Thursday projected to be in the low to mid 40s across the Dakotas into north central Minnesota into the north woods of Wisconsin. And look at that, guys. Ontario, Canada, we could be in the mid 30s by the time we get to Thursday, October 6th, and then that will spread a little farther south. The immediate Gulf Coast will be the warm spot to go. So if you guys like vacation spots, I uh, New Orleans, over there toward Corpus Christi, Houston, all the way over towards the Mobile, Alabama area, widespread upper 80s to low 90s here. That would be a prime vacation spot here as we have the warmer temperatures of the year, or actually of the uh, time frame down there. Um, and looking here at the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and much of the north central U.S., we're really seeing a lot 
lot of those 40s. We could be in the upper 40s in the Chicago lakefront on your Friday. We could only touch up into the middle 40s and toward the Twin Cities and much of uh, the Dakotas as we get in towards Friday time frame, October 7th. And look at your overnight lows Friday night going into Saturday morning here next weekend. Yeah, we could be talking about a lot of upper 20s and lower 30s out there with some hard freezes as well as some frost as well. So I expect more freeze warnings and more frost advisories here in the days to come, especially as we get towards next weekend. Looking at the precipitation, however, does look rather uh, bleak for the northern United States and eastern United States with some drier than normal type of, uh, precipitation there. And we also have some above normal precipitation across the four corners there with some of that monsoonal moisture going towards the second week there of October. Looking overall, however, from now all the way through the October 11th, 12th time frame, it's going to be pretty quiet across the United States. We will have a couple of showers across some of these areas once we see some of these cold fronts and troughs move down. But again, a lot of this is going to be on the onus of, um, you know, the monsoonal moisture from western Mexico all the way up across the uh, Rocky Mountains and the desert southwest during that period. And that is why we are concerned because the U.S. drought monitor did get released on September 29th a few days ago. And yes, we are seeing drought starting to expand and intensify again across portions of the Great Plains in the west and starting to expand farther east toward the Tennessee Valley. Looking at this all the way through December 31st toward the turn of the year, the very end of the year there before we turn to 2023, I do expect here this, this drought to actually expand all the way farther east towards the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and potentially even Florida as well and start to move closer there toward the Mississippi Valley and Tennessee Valley as we get towards the end of the year. So that will be something to keep an eye on. But thank you guys so much for watching my video remember to like the video down below give it a thumbs up leave any comments questions and concerns below i'll get to those later on today and subscribe to the youtube channel guys uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates here in the days weeks and months to come have a great sunday and a great rest of your weekend guys and i'll see you all in the next video